green with envy. I spent years being frustrated because... I don't know, I guess I just... I wasn't really envying anybody. I was just feeling sorry for myself, you know? I was envying a version of me in my mind that was doing a little better than I was. But earlier tonight I was... Um, How do I want to say this? You know, I, I spent a lot of years, you know, feeling kind of this self-pity thing. And I even wrote this song at one point, and it was just like reeking of self-pity. And so I imagine it's kind of this Elvis Costello song, because it sounded, you know, kind of the bitter nerd kind of thing. Um, it's called Unappreciated. how I was feeling not that long ago I feel like in a lot of ways I'm really cool I'm really great you know I have sort of standards that I judge everyone else by and I judge myself by the same standards and sometimes I look at the things I do and I go I think what I'm doing is really cool now this is the same sort of you know, when Quentin Tarantino does it, I say, hey, he's arrogant, but I'm, you know, I'm jealous of him because he's made a career being Quentin Tarantino and thinking Quentin Tarantino things are cool is, is part of his livelihood. And when he says, I think this is the shit, and, and then a hundred million people go see it and put their asses in seats because Quentin fucking Tarantino says it's cool ass, Quentin Tarantino stamp of fucking approval, okay? So, and he does that, and I, there's no Rob Wheeler stamp of approval. You know, my, my, my journals going back to 1994 are full of this stuff. And in fact, in the early days, I was much more gung-ho. Completely confident that it was going to happen. And, you know, weathering the face of all criticism and all pessimism, I just kept believing and believing and believing and believing and looking at small changes, incremental growth, but it's like, where is the fucking big change for fuck's sake? Finally, come on! Where are the paychecks I deserve? And I was just reading this article tonight, it was about quantifying art rather than doing it qualitatively, doing it quantitatively also. Uh, there's young geniuses who make a sudden flash of brilliance, and then there's old masters. And then they said, that, you know, there's actually something, a different category called old geniuses, who, who kind of take their time getting there and slowly, one step at a time, build up to a level of, you know, surpassing brilliance. But they kind of do it experimentally over their whole lives and achieve it later on, rather than in their 20s. And... You know, I, whenever I read something like that, I always think, oh, you know, I, I think, that's me. That's what I've been building up to. Because I don't think I've peaked yet. I think I haven't even, you know, hit my stride. I haven't, not at the height of my powers. I'm still building up to it. And my 40s are going to be hot shit. And I've been thinking that since my 20s, where I was, like, laying the groundwork by trying to practice getting good at everything I want to do. And then my 30s, I wanted to get, you know, more professional at it. And I want to start making money at it. And it's like my 30s are almost over and like, shoot, you know, I'm a little behind on something. Got lost my way somehow. Lost my momentum. No, I'm still moving this way. It's just... So anyway, when I, when I hear things like that, I, I always kind of relate to it in some way. And I know that like when I was in my early 20s, I had this kind of expectation that I was going to be a young genius. kind of went through a little hubristic phase like that, especially in film school. 
And, you know, I was stuck on the whole Orson Welles, 25 years old, and Citizen Kane thing, thinking, well, i got to make a feature film by the time I'm 25, or I'm not going to beat Orson Welles. And then I eventually changed my mind on that. You know, I, uh, I realized, you know, one thing you don't want if you studied any film history is you don't want Orson Welles' film career. You don't want to be, you know, selling no wine before it's time and not being able to finish making a movie you started 30 years earlier because you still can't afford it, no matter how many commercials and voiceovers you do. Anyway, so I thought, why am I in such a hurry? I don't need to be in a hurry. Recognize that a lot of people who are in a hurry flame out, and I didn't want to flame out. In fact, there were a lot of careers I admired where they built slowly and then developed a full head of steam and then they were doing their best work later on in a more sustained way because they'd earned those legs. I think I'm going to like being 45. I think I'll be cooking on all burners by then. But the build-up starts now. A lot of it's up here. This is where the editing happens. And that's why I'm good at it. It's this, this brain is what people should be paying for. This brain is what I should be charging for. You know, hundreds of dollars an hour to rent this brain. RentRobsBrain.com RentMyBrain.com What if that's taken? Anyway... Well, it's traditional end with some music, so maybe I'll do that.